Earnings in Kenya have been dropping for the last three years when it comes to flowers. And one of the attributable reasons was a slack in demand that we had in Europe. But the new phenomenon that is coming up is the high cost of production. And that has been one of the major factors that is affecting the flower farms. But I understand this is not only peculiar to Kenya. Give us an indication how the cost of production is actually affecting other countries as well. Increasing costings of production are actually being affected in uh, all countries where flowers are being produced. Countries like Colombia, Ecuador, also Ethiopia and Kenya are having problems with increased costs. So this is not only a problem of Kenya, it is also a problem of all the other countries. And in that respect, it is not a disadvantage. So that increases the demand for flowers globally because then again we have short supply. There is a short of supply. I mean, a lot of people think that there is an oversupply of flowers at this moment, but there is not actually. And that's why, uh, although the crisis in Europe is still going on, I'm afraid to say it will last another two years, according to my personal um, um, perception. Um, there are new markets uh, on the on the corner, around the corner, and one of them is Russia. And Russia is a big new market for Kenya. So although you might have increased costings for production, you have uh, more new markets around the corner that you can use, and that will offset, of course, the problems of higher increased uh, cost of production. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned the diversified new markets, which is a point I actually want to follow up on, because the traditional market has been Holland for Kenya. I think Kenya is the leading supplier to Holland, uh, to the uh, EU, Europe, to England, Europe. Yes. UK, Germany, yeah. Holland. Yes, yes. but now you're mentioning new diversified markets. Which are some of the other markets that probably Kenya needs to start focusing on and probably marketing themselves more aggressively to diversify their revenues. You have a lot of advantages in markets like Australia, uh, Korea with the new direct flight of uh, Korean Airways um, from Nairobi to Seoul. Um, there are markets in the Far East and actually also the United States is a big big potential market for Kenya. Underestimated until now and of course having problems because you don't have these direct flights uh, straight from Nairobi to, uh, into the United States but uh, through Frankfurt or London or Amsterdam you have great opportunities also in the United States and Canada. Mm -hmm. So, Far is Asia, where does it feature? Asia is also a very big potential for Kenyan flowers. It is a bit far further away, so you have to deal with transportation costs. But in general, um, there are markets where you, also with a higher quality of flowers that Kenya is producing uh, these years, you have uh, lots of opportunities to, to find new countries in, in Japan, for mm -hmm. example. Uh, even China is, on the, is on the, around the corner coming up. Uh, and other countries that, that will uh, like to import flowers from Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, so, uh, having a closer look at the Kenyan uh, production, over the years it has also been uh, dropping, as I had mentioned earlier. But now, how, where is the turnaround? What can we expect uh, you know, in the global market in terms of production for this year? Where, where is it sitting? Like I said, there are very, uh, very many um, new opportunities for Kenya um, coming up and uh, that means that you don't have to worry, according to my perception, mm -hmm. about uh, selling the flowers you produce. And there's a lot of uh, growth in Kenya. Um, two years ago, I think Kenya was the, the country with the, m the biggest expansion of flower production in uh, terms of, of building new greenhouses. And uh, that will continue. Uh, Kenya, as far as I'm concerned, is in the top three of most important flower producing countries in the world. There is a shortage of supply. There are problems also in other countries where flowers are being produced. So all by all, I think the, the benefits, the positive parts of the, of the problems, of the, of the opportunities are much bigger than, than the problems that you have actually of increased production costs. Mm -hmm. You say Kenya is a third after I think uh, you, Colombia and uh, Ecuador, but yes. what role is Kenya playing when it comes to the continent in terms of flower production, in terms of even being the hub or the supply chain oh, into yeah, the other markets? You are number one in Africa, there's no doubt about it. Yes. And then for a long time you have nothing. And, and, and then you get other countries. Although I must say at the same time, having said that, that Ethiopia is coming up very, very quick. Mm -hmm. So if you want to uh, compare uh, one country with Kenya in Africa, then it's Ethiopia. Um, there are a lot of differences in, in, in quality, in size, in, in way of distributing, selling the products. So in that respect, I don't see Ethiopia as a, as a competition to Kenya, but it is of course an, 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 a number two um, um, country that will uh, come more and more close to Kenya mm -hmm. when you talk about production of, uh, of flowers. But again, not as a competition, but more as a 
partner, I would say. The same as you can see that also in South America with Colombia and Ecuador. In the beginning when Ecuador came up in 92, everybody was afraid of Ecuador, and especially of course the Colombians. Mm -hmm. But right now the Colombians and Ecuadorians are working together. Mm -hmm. And I think also that Ethiopia and Kenya will work together in the nearby future, mm -hmm. both supplying the same market even or different markets. Mm -hmm. Let's now talk about a little bit about earnings. I did mention that last year it dropped by about 14% due to the sl slackening demand in Europe and also because of the high cost of production. And uh, flowers and in, in the bigger picture of horticulture is a very key source for revenue for the country. And I think it's the fourth at the, at the moment, third and fourth, that's why it's playing around after tea, remittances and tourism. Now, with regards to, because the laws of demand and supply are at play, where you're talking about demand being very high and the supply is very low. So that does insinuate prices are likely to look better. What is yes. your projection on what kind of prices we can expect? Oh, yeah, for sure, you will have to find somehow uh, this, this, this agreement again. Mm -hmm. That is, um, of course, uh, a hot item at this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, that will help a lot. Uh, but uh, the outlook for Kenyan flowers into Europe is, is, looks, looks okay, looks good. It's not going to be affected. It's not going to um, 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 turn down and, and, and create, let's say, an, a very bad outlook uh, for, 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 for Kenya in terms of flower exports. But again, uh, you need to uh, find uh, a solution to this agreement that you do need. And um, with that agreement, of course, you will have a bright uh, outlook for export of flowers to Europe. But without it, you would even also, I think, do well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't worry too much about it.